Hello, and welcome to the PC Security Channel. This is Leo, and it's time to take another look at Malwarebytes. If you guys remember last time I tested it, it didn't really do so well. I think it let in a ransomware. I think it was Locky. And after that, I've actually had a conversation with uh, Marcin Klesnitsky, their CEO, and sincere apologies to him, because when we talked, I think he mentioned that they had some new version coming out soon with fixes, and I did share the samples. And hopefully it's much safer now, but I never really got around to testing it again, which is um, unfortunate, because I did plan on doing it. Now here we are, and let's see if Malwarebytes is really ready for malware big time. Now, um, just to give you guys some background on this, Malwarebytes is a really good second opinion scanner. That's what it is known for. In the last year or so, they announced a full-on premium version which is supposed to replace your traditional AV program. So before, they had a premium version which was supposed to be an add-on, and that's um, kind of the version that I found to do quite well. I mean, it was okay for an add-on. It blocked a few extra things, but mostly the success of Malwarebytes was as a second opinion scanner. That's just my opinion. But since last year, they've started to really push their full-on AV kind of thing, and I haven't really found it to be sufficient. So let's just give it a shot and see what it does against a lot of malware. So if I'm right, I have um, 932 items here. I'm just going to drag these into the system and let's see what Malwarebytes can do. The fact that it's not detecting anything while I'm copying suggests that it only works on execution, but we will do a right-click scan and give it every chance to detect these files. The original number, as you guys know, is uh, 932. That's what Malwarebytes is going to be after. So far, the threats identified seems uh, pretty low, but it is catching up. The scan does seem quite fast, so that's a pro. Now, another thing um, that came across during my talk with Marcin is that Malwarebytes seems to work more um, based on the attack vector. For example, if a malware is being delivered um, as an exploit or using an exploit, Malwarebytes may just block the website or the exploit or the process by which the malware payload would be delivered to your system, which again isn't reflected very well on this test. So it is possible that Malwarebytes kind of uses that type of approach, which isn't really adequately represented in my tests always. I would argue that um, that is not necessarily always the case. What if the threat is propagated through a new attack vector? What if it's spread via um, USB stick or, um, or, or just simply like, what if it's an email attachment and the user downloads it, which is how a lot of malware is distributed. So I don't really entirely discount this process of testing. It seems we have 510 threats identified. Doesn't give me an option to delete, so I'll just quarantine. The interface and UI seems to have really matured, and that seems um, very professional now. Removal process is also pretty quick, but then again, this is just a standard quarantine. There's no repair or advanced disinfection going on here. Seems Malwarebytes is done, but it needs to restart my system to finish the removal process. So I'll say yes to that, and let's see what we end up with. Our system is back up, and it seems we still have 427 items left over. Let's go over to our reference folder and just make sure that our numbers are correct here. We did start with 932, and now we have 427, so let me do the quick math. That is a detection ratio of around 54.18%, which, forgive me, but it's not very impressive. So this is mainly why I'm not very confident about Malwarebytes as a standalone security solution. Maybe with Windows Defender or some other AV it can help, but uh, is it really prepared to deal with all sorts of malware? I'm not sure. But anyway, the test doesn't end here, obviously, because none of these threats are actually threats unless they infect our system and do something. We have Malwarebytes enabled, and now we're going to run through these files and see if it can protect us.
Another website blocked and I think this system has had enough. So we're gonna call it a day, restart the system, do some second opinion scans and then we'll see how well Malwarebytes did. Some websites were blocked and I did see a couple of suspicious files being detected as well, but I'm not sure if everything was successfully stopped. So we'll find out. Oh, here's another one, adware that was prevented from starting, so that's nice. All right, our second opinion scanner results are in, and it's not looking too good for Malwarebytes. Zemana only detected this one Trojan. Now, I know it's in the temp folder, but um, it is active, so that does count. And apart from that, there seem to be a lot of Trojans all over the place. Here's one in app data roaming. Here's um, one in program files. And just a whole lot of stuff. Now, it is better than last time in the sense that we don't have our data encrypted, that's good. But it still is far from ideal in terms of, um, you know, test results. Like I do these tests with a lot of products and I never consider results like this to be good. Like usually it's much better. I think my opinion on Malwarebytes still stands. It is a good second opinion scanner. It's great for cleaning your system. It is probably also good as an add-on program if you want one, but on its own, not really effective. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Leo, thank you for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.